just like disown it. But no, it's mine and I own it and it's all personal. So tell me, Professor, yes, about student. naming <laughs> <laughs> since it, uh, naming a product. Names like so do your shirts or your tees and pants have different names? They all have the names of the women in my family. Do they really? Every season I have to like somebody has to have a baby if there's gonna be a new style because I'm running out. So what happens if let's just say a certain t shirt doesn't do well that's named after let's say your sister? Oh I tank it and then I just then a couple seasons I name it again after the same song. Okay, okay. Yeah. She doesn't die with the style. I just curious on <laughs> it. But naming a product, tell me how you you came up with this this naming let's say formula and that is families family members right I mean for me it was actually functional because in our first season there were 13 styles and I wanted to remember I could, it was easier for me to remember them by name than by style number okay. then it got more sophisticated and there's a nomenclature in a certain way that fashion companies you know catalog their goods and all of a sudden there were really long numbers and I still wanted to name them and so I just have always given the names the sales girls I like the use idea. names too I like the idea yeah but now it's it makes it feel personal well, back to the very first yeah. point. They talk about, oh, I love the, the Tessa t-shirt, and people know the shirt by name. That's it's huge for me. Tell me about, well, let's, let's, let's talk to the audience about the whole idea. What do you think you should do when it comes to naming something? How do you do it? Do you talk to friends and family? Do you do what comes from the heart? Do you go through focus groups? What's your feeling on that? Ours was super organic. I, did, I had no idea what I wanted to name it, and my business partner said, we're going to name it Tilly Hancock. And it was like, sure. That's what we'll do. That was not, it, that's pretty easy. First of all, it was easy, but after then we realized, or at least I realized the consequences of like, holy moly, this is my name. First of all, I have to look at it all day long, which is strange. Secondly, I can't disown it. And it's hard to say. So there's a cool it's thing. Hard to say. Uh, you know, Talia isn't, you know, Talia like saying Todd. I don't know. People can't get it. So it's cool to have people learn it and know it. And then they feel like another part of it because they know how to say okay. it. And when people say, oh, Talia, they go, oh, no, it's Talia Hancock. Okay, Talia. Yeah. What's so, another thing you have learned through this process of starting this business that has, has grown substantially? What would you do different? You know, what, what errors have you learned that you would like to teach people that are listening not to do? I've thankfully not done anything catastrophic. However, I haven't been in business that long. Yeah, well, still, you've been around almost two years. I've learned, yes, and I've learned never to assume, especially in design, um, never to assume that somebody understood. I am like now meticulous about every stitch, uh, every way that I want it to be sold. My sales girls know exactly what I want, and some people think, you know, that's it's crazy and it's OCD, but it's the only way to totally have it run the way you want it to be run. So don't assume. Do not don't, assume any details. So make sure all the facts are there. Everything. You have to have your hand in every single part okay. of it. And okay. that's what's important to me is having my hand in everything. Well, I think people listening, yeah. they should be aware of that. Don't assume. Make sure you fact Don't check. farm anything out. Do it yourself first, then farm Oh, that's out. interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me another. Okay, let's see. I touch everything. You touch everything. Every product, every, somehow. Yeah. I've, I'm, yeah. I'm part of everything that goes through the warehouse, through the business. And I think at least at this small stage that we're at or before we grow, it's, it's really important because I feel like when I have a huge, huge, you know, employee base, I can say to them, I did that. I packed that box. I folded that shirt. Is that important to you? Is that an ego I thing? Think, or no, is that I think it's important because I think all the responsibility falls on me at this point. And I think it's a way to inspire and cultivate ownership within a brand and a company. When you can say, I was there. Like, I know how you're feeling. Yeah, today really sucked. And, you know, you're at the bottom of the totem pole. But listen, I'm at the top of the totem pole and I was at your place once. So I, I, I can relate to my employees, That's at least admirable. I can say. That really is. Do, do you think people that are running small businesses should be able to run every position that's in that business? Absolutely. I think people that are running big businesses should be able to run Yeah, that's position. a tough one at times, right? I know. And, and there's, there's something to be said about, you know, allocating jobs, but I think you should still, I don't know, I'm going to have a hard time totally letting go. Are you? Yeah. It's that's kind it's of my the, baby. I do it all day long, twenty okay. hours a day. I could see as your business grows massively huge, yes. you do one of those undercover Next boss. Week. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's my favorite. I will one hundred percent do it. Like I'll go, you know, surprise like the T shirt folder and he won't know it's me. That would be fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Julia Hancock's doing it. You can see your products in places like Neiman Marcus. Name me some other high end stores. Your products. Um, in Newport, we are in a store called Nova Santo Sports. They're our, one of our best accounts. Um, you should more know than the others. Yeah, Shame of on boutiques. you. Shame on you. Let's see. But hey, wait, wait. Yeah. Step back. 
Let's yeah. talk about investors and people that are eating it with you. How did you go off and raise the money to get this going? I'm privately financed. So that means friends and family? No, I have my business partner who finances it. Wow. Yeah. How did you find your business partner? He found me out of college. He was a trustee of my university. And after I presented my business plan for basically my final project, he offered me the chance to do a, a, a business and we settled on a clothing line. So again, back to the professor, which you are mm -hmm. now, okay? Yes. How would you suggest to listeners yeah. to find a business partner? It's like a marriage, first of all. Like you're about to get married to somebody. Mm -hmm. We get along amazingly well and we trust each other and um, he's wiser by far than I am and he's been in business longer than I've been alive, but we respect each other on this like crazy level and we, we hear each other's opinions and the fact that he listens to this like 25 year old girl I'll never understand. But I couldn't even tell you it was so crazily like God done that I don't I couldn't even tell you how to find a business partner because he found me. And he took well, a you chance were in the on right place. It was the right place. It right also time. sounds like you did a lot of work to create a great business plan, yes. which was recognized as being great mm -hmm. where you went to school. Yeah. So and he was probably looking for someone to work with, right? Yes. So it was again yeah, it was like, not luck. No, the pieces fit. Exactly. The pieces so you totally worked really fit. hard through school to get there. Yes, I did. I was like O C D in school since kindergarten. You've mentioned that often. The whole O C D thing. So yeah, so let's talk about now where do you go? You're you're got a bunch of different products, 